The first segment in our program features the West Side Nut Club Fall Festival. This documentary takes us back to the very beginning of one of the most famous street festivals in the United States. As fall approaches and the warm days of summer begin to disappear, the city of Evansville prepares for its famed annual celebration. What began as a small Halloween masquerade has grown into a yearly event known as the West Side Nut Club's Fall Festival. For the first full week of October, traffic is blocked from historic Franklin Street on Evansville's west side as thousands of people crowd the area each year. Food booths line the sidewalks while carnival games and amusement park rides sit in the lawn of the West Branch Library. The Nut Club has expanded this event to include nightly entertainment, a talent show, a king and queen contest, a tug of war, as well as a parade to end the festival. The history of the Fall Festival began in the West Side Businessmen's Association. Dick Barkett, a past president of the West Side Nut Club and an expert on the history of the Fall Festival, recalls the early days. We started actually in 1921, but there's records of, uh, of a 1914 Businessmen's Association having one. In 1921, the West Side Businessmen's Association often met informally for lunch at Horney's Restaurant on Franklin Street which was owned by Marcella Stein's parents. And while they were there, they just enjoyed each other uh, talking and kibitzing and talking about their fishing trip. And, and they had such a good time. They said, you know, we really ought to have some kind of organization, a club. And because they acted so silly, <laughs> they'd throw napkins at one another. <laughs> and. Um, Mr. Stinson said we ought to call it a, a bunch of nuts. <laughs> so they named it the West Side Nut Club, and that was organized in 1921. At the end of October, the newly formed West Side Nut Club hosted the first of its annual celebrations on Franklin Street. The early festivals were Halloween themed and drew crowds for a single night. When the fall festival first began, it was held around Halloween, and it was cold they'd come in and get a nickel cup of coffee. And there they'd sit and sit because they didn't want to get back on the cold again. And uh, so finally my father thought, we can't have all these people just sitting in here. They need to be out on the street. And so he decided to put a table out in front. And I was only 10 years old and I could sell um, um, candy, candy bars, in those days, cigarettes, uh, chewing gum, people walking up and down the street wouldn't have to come in and sit down. Over the years, the Fall Festival has evolved. Some of these changes have been made for practical purposes. For instance, no longer hosting the event at the end of October. But then as the years went on, they found that it was too cold. And so they moved it up closer and closer until now, the Fall Festival is the first full week in October. As the festival grew longer and more people began to attend, the need for entertainment grew. One of the first events to be held was the King and Queen Contest. Yeah, the first King and Queen Contest was in 1947. Doris Buckman won the uh, first one. Store owners would often decorate their businesses during the week of the Fall Festival in the hopes of attracting customers and vendors would rely on having an eye-catching booth rather than exotic food. And when I first came in, I think it was mainly the the staples, the hamburgers, and the pizzas, and the Toronto puffs, and the corn dogs, and things like that. And now they've, they've kind of, in the past 15 years or so, they've kind of, what I'm trying to outdo the other one with gator gumbo and uh, suckers with bugs in them, and uh, uh, trying to find something unusual. Carnival rides and games were introduced into the festival in the 1950s. However, instead of being able to mill about freely, participants entered an enclosed rides area. The rides back in the 50s were kind of canvassed off where when you got in you were a captive audience and you had to go all the way around all the rides and all the games uh, before you could get out. In the late 50s, several big name entertainers were brought in to celebrate the festival. In 1955, Homer and Jethro were the featured act. And in 1956, a Hopalong Cassidy and his horse Topper came to Evansville. At the Hopalong Cassidy one, uh, that was supposedly the biggest uh, crowd that we had, at least up to that time, for any main parade. And I participated in the crowning of the Queen that year and uh, uh, several other things during, during the year. And that he actually had his horse uh, boarded out here on St. Joe Avenue, out here by Allen's Lane on the west side. 
1957, Minnie Pearl, a star of the Grand Old Opry and later the popular television series Hee Haw, appeared to perform. The Fall Festival also incorporates two parades. The Pet Parade was the original parade, dating back to the first few festivals. This gave children the opportunity to dress their pets and march them along the street for all to see. The Saturday Parade is a traditional closing of the festival with cars, floats, and marching bands proceeding along Franklin Street. The parade was originally held on Saturday night, but after an accident involving a float without brake lights, the time was changed to Saturday afternoon. In recent years, the parade has been restored to its original time, Saturday night. Since 1921, the Westside Nut Club's Fall Festival has become an Evansville tradition. What began as a simple gathering has changed into a multi-block event that draws hundreds of thousands of people to the west side each year.